Welcome friends to another r slash entitled parents video. If this video hits a million likes, we'll begin development on the de-entitlement ray gun, so we'll never have to deal with the entitled parents again. That said, our first story of the day is by Vatican Cameo 714 My mom wants me to repay her the plane tickets for a trip I didn't want to take. So last year, my mom wanted my wife and I to fly with her and our two kids to Wyoming to see my older sister. We were... We were all ready to go, when at the last minute, my older brother randomly texted the group chat my mom and sister had with us about the trip. He said he was looking forward to seeing us. Here's the problem with that. I specifically asked my mother if my brother was going to be a part of this trip. She swore up and down that he was not going to be anywhere near us. He just got out of prison again. I don't like my older brother because he's a liar and a thief, and some inappropriate nastiness he did to me when we were younger. My family downplays what happened and even tells me the certain events didn't happen. My older brother is a narcissist who needs people to like him. He feels threatened when he knows someone doesn't like him and becomes really hostile. That's pretty triggering for me. He does things like follow me into a room alone to trap me and tell me how much of a witch I'm being to him, such like that. I just can't stand it, but no one wants to see that. So after confronting my mother for conspiring against me the entire time, my wife called my mother and told her we were no longer going on the trip. Instead, I shut off my phone and we took our kids on a family trip of our own. There was a bunch of family drama, but eventually we reconcile. My mother doesn't like how much I'll defend my boundaries, but we get by. She called me up yesterday to tell me the plane tickets from that trip were still active, but only the four of us can use them because they're in our names. My mom can't transfer them to her name or use them herself, even though she paid for them. Whoops. She wants me to pay her back for the price of the four tickets as well as use the tickets before the end of the year. On a trip with her to see my sister, I bought them for you so it'll have to be a trip with all of us. There's no way in any realm of heck I'm paying for her crap. The wife and I didn't know where we were taking our kids yet, but we still have a few months to decide. Knowing that she paid for the tickets, but she didn't tell you who all was going to be there, especially somebody that causes you trauma, should you feel bad at all for them having paid for the tickets and essentially going to waste them? Or even feeling bad for using the tickets for a different trip? Let me know in the comments down below. This next story is by Cassie121, entitled Mom Tries to Steal My Preselected Seat. So this happened about two years ago, but I just went on a flight recently and was reminded of it. My family had an event that we had to go to that was across the country. A lot of my family, my mom, dad, sister, and several aunts, uncles, and cousins had already flown out the week before, but I had work and my daughter had preschool, so we stayed behind and were going to fly separately on the weekend. My aunt had a little girl that she couldn't bring when she went, so she asked that I bring her with me when I and my daughter flew. My aunt's daughter Grace was almost two, but she was nonverbal so far, and my daughter Ellery was a little over three. I was 18. Ellery was conceived out of assault and yes, I was crazy to fly with two toddlers alone. Since I was flying with two toddlers, I wanted to make sure that we had a row to ourselves. I was planning on having Ellery in the window, Grace in the middle, and me in the aisle. So I went for the slightly more expensive option of choosing pre-selected seats. We got to be in priority boarding, so we boarded before a lot of the other passengers. We had checked our suitcases, so I just had my backpack with all the things I would need, jackets, food, toys, my electronics, and a diaper bag. So I had Grace strapped to my front, my backpack on my back, the diaper bag in one hand and Ellery's hand in my other. I was saddled up. I got on the plane with no fuss from the girls, but when I got to our designated seats, yep, you guessed it. An entitled mom and her son, probably about six or seven, were sitting in our row. So our convo went a little like this. I say, excuse me, these are our seats, we pre-selected them. She says, um, I'm sorry honey, but it's open seating and I got here first. You can go find another seat. I say, no, this is my row, I pre-selected it online and paid extra for it. I showed her my ticket. She says, honey, that's not how it works on this airline, and unaccompanied minors need to fly next to the flight attendants anyways. Me getting exasperated and exhausted still holding a baby and a backpack, I say, I'm an adult and this is my daughter. Please move or I will need to get the flight attendant. She says, go ahead, she'll tell you the same thing. So of course I go get a flight attendant and explain the situation and show her my ticket. Enter flight attendant. The flight attendant says, ma'am, she did in fact pre-select this row, so I'm gonna need you to move to another seat. Entitled mother says, excuse me? 
She looked genuinely shocked. Flight attendant says, please move to another seat. We have plenty. Gestures to the back where there's still literally whole rows available. She says, no, we got here first and my son needs to be over the wing. The flight attendant looks slightly annoyed at this, but keeps her customer service voice and says, why don't I help you find another seat? I'm sure your son will be fine. Entitled mother says, no, I'm staying in this seat because I got here first. At this point, Ellery was getting antsy standing in one place and flight attendant noticed. The attendant says, sweetie, why don't you take a seat right there while I sort this out? I'll bring you an apple juice in a little bit. Ellery sat down in a seat on the other side of the row, the one empty seat in the aisle of the plane that was filling up. Flight attendant says to entitled mother, we are going to have to remove you from the aircraft if you don't move to another seat. Entitled mother finally gets up at this point and drags her child behind her pushing past us, saying angrily at me and the girls, you teenagers are so entitled. Flight attendant apologizes to me and helps me settle the girls and my things into our row. They say, wonderful job dealing by the way, you seem like a responsible big sister. I say, actually the older one's my daughter, younger is my cousin. The flight attendant smiles, then you're a very good mother, I'll get you an apple juice for the kids. Just make sure you stow it before we take off. Let me know if there's anything else I can do to help you. That parting comment from the entitled mother would make me so happy. For her to get up and walk off going, you teenagers are so entitled. Knowing full well that sorry darling, I pre-selected these seats so you were in the wrong the entire time would actually allow me to just sit down in that seat, kick back as much as you can in an aircraft and enjoy the ride. It's like the most satisfying thing because you got back at that entitled mother and you shut them down when they were trying to act spoiled. Our next story is by Venetia Lin. Entitled mother gets me beaten up because I refused to steal for her son, entitled kid. A few weeks ago, I visited my nephew, 24-year-old male, and he said something that reminded me of this story that happened back when I was 13. I'd never forgotten it, it tormented me for years, but until my nephew made the comment, I'll add what he said at the end of this post, I hadn't realized just how much it shaped who I am. I'm the youngest of five kids, three sis and a bro. Our mom raised us alone. My next door neighbor, who I'll call entitled mother, also had five kids, four girls and a boy. The boy, nine-year-old male, is entitled kid. This next part is relevant. All of us were white except for entitled kid, whose father was from India. We're all in the UK. Important info, mum and entitled mother were friends as well as neighbors. They'd go in each other's homes daily for a cup of tea and chat. I never liked entitled mother. She always knocked me down when my mom wasn't around, and when I told my mom about this, she always told me I misunderstood. An entitled mother would never mean anything she said in a bad way. She told me that I was too sensitive, which I admit I am, and I still am to this day. Two of my sisters, 15 and 16 at the time, were friends with two of entitled mother's daughters and were really nice. Nothing like their bro. The story, mom never liked us staying indoors, so I was sent to play outside on my own. Entitled kid saw me and called me over. We were by his front gate at the time, which is important, with full view of their front door. Entitled kid says, OP, I want some Smarties, can you get me some? They're similar to M&Ms in the UK. I say, give me the money for them and I'll pop over to the shops for you. I had nothing else to do, so I didn't mind. Entitled kid says, I don't have any money. I say, I don't either, sorry. Entitled kid says, go and steal some Smarties for me. I say, no, I won't do that. He says, go and steal me some, or I'll tell my mom you were mean to me. I say, no, entitled kid, then try to change the subject. I commented that I liked his new jacket that he was wearing. Entitled kid looks at his jacket, and his face changed. He started looking all smug. He proceeded to spit a big gulp of saliva onto his sleeve. This was then followed by an almighty scream. Entitled mother comes running out looking all worried at entitled kid, saying, what's wrong? Entitled kid says, look holds up his arm with fake tears streaming down his face. OP spat on my jacket and called me a racial slur. I say, entitled mother, I didn't. Entitled kid wanted me to steal Smarties, but I refused, so he spat on his own jacket and is trying to blame me for it. Entitled mother didn't say a word to me. The look of anger was clear on her face and she glared at me. She screams at the top of her lungs for my mum. My mum comes running out, sees an angry entitled mother, a crying entitled kid, and me just standing there. I admit I was too in shock to react. What entitled mother said next, I'll never forget. She said, 
OP just spat on Entitled Kid's jacket and called him a racial slur. Is that how you're raising your kids? Mom to me asks, is that true? And I say no, Entitled Kid wanted me to steal sweets for him. I refused, so he's trying to get me in trouble. Entitled Mother says, I saw and heard her. I was stood by the front door when OP spat on his jacket and called him a racial slur. She turns to me, I saw and heard you. That was all my mom needed to hear. Another adult had seen it, so I didn't stand a chance. Mom grabs me by my hair, dragging me into my house. Her anger now matched Entitled Mother's. Once inside, she pushed me against the wall and started slamming my head into it while screaming that she never raised me to be a racist. This was followed by hard slaps. I managed to pull away and tried to run up to my room, but she followed me. Once in my room, I was pushed on my bed and slapped some more. Mom thought she had a racist daughter and was livid. She then grounded me for a month. I cried myself to sleep that night. For a month, I wasn't allowed to leave my small box bedroom for anything other than school. I had no radio or TV in my room. We couldn't afford it. My meals were brought to me. I'd be screamed at if I left for the bathroom, so I resorted to peeing in a plastic box and tipping it down the toilet after mom had gone to bed. My sisters, knowing what Entitled Kid was like, tried to make our mom see sense, but as far as she was concerned, another adult had seen me, so it must be true. Entitled Kid was scared of my 16-year-old sister, so Sis took advantage of this and proceeded to threaten Entitled Kid that if he ever did anything like that again, that she would make him regret it. Her threats worked and Entitled Kid left me alone. My sisters would also bring me books to read and keep me company when they could. I never had kids of my own, but looked after my sister's kids a lot. The comment my nephew said was this, One of the things I remember growing up about you is that if someone accused me of doing something, you didn't just take their word for it. You asked me if it was true and told me that you wouldn't be angry, that you just wanted to know the truth. He then said, I was never scared of telling you the truth because you always had my back. If I had done it, you'd calmly explain why it was wrong and that would be the end of it. It really helped knowing that something good came out of what happened. This was such a tough thing to read because, after all that, you're waiting for some kind of reclamation or trying to figure out what ways that they could resolve or fix the situation, and there's just no good result to be had with that entitled kid, entitled mother, and OP's mom. I mean, just the fact that OP's mom act like that, I would imagine that there would be some kind of long-term resentment towards their own mom. I know I probably would've if I was treated like that growing up. I'm just glad OP had some awesome sisters to help them through that. This next story is by Snoo Strawberries 4044 Entitled Mother Gets Destroyed by a Multilingual Restaurant Owner So I was in a Chinese restaurant waiting on my curry chip to go, and I'm just talking with the girl at the till, making small talk, passing the time as the restaurant's empty. Then this presence descended upon the restaurant, an Entitled Mother, an Entitled Son, enter, and immediately Entitled Mother is obnoxious and overall not pleasant. She proceeded to demand chicken nuggets and chips for her son. I don't know why she decided a Chinese restaurant and not a local chippy, there isn't a McDonald's close. And the lady just takes the order and relays it to the kitchen. This is where Entitled Mother shows her true colors. As the chefs were making food and talking, it was in Chinese presumably, Entitled Mother scoffs loudly and says, This is Ireland, we talk English here. I'm just shocked at that, and then the superstar owner comes out fuming after hearing this, shouting in perfect English, This is Ireland, we speak Irish, and then shouts in perfect Irish what translates to, You whale of a woman, you are a racist witch, and not welcome. I can't contain myself with a burst of laughter as the entitled mother is shocked that she's being shouted at in Irish, which she doesn't speak, and leaves in anger and silence. I go over to the owner, who is laughing, and congratulate her on handling the situation. I got my food on the house, but I tipped huge. And here, tipping isn't really a thing, it's only for really special occasions. I mean, by all accounts, that owner showed her what's right. If you're gonna act like that in a place that has storied roots with a very specific language, and not even name that language, you're just asking to be exposed. And our final story of the day is by Elk Waffle. Entitled Family Seems to Think Bridal Store is a Daycare This one happened this morning while I was shopping for my wedding dress. Big yay, my dress is awesome. As anyone who's been involved in weddings will know most bridal stores operate on appointment only and are a pretty boring place for a young child as it's just browsing and trying on dresses. 
I arrived for my appointment and was sad filling out the arrival paperwork when this woman enters accompanied by three children. These children were already shouting and fighting on entering the store. She insisted she had an appointment. She didn't. They only do one appointment per two hours, and it was mine. Then switched to insisting that she needed a dress urgently for a wedding this weekend, and she'd only be a few minutes. They do bridesmaid, mother of bride, party, etc. dresses too. The staff ask her to leave, but she just blows straight past them and starts going through the racks. Currently not allowed due to COVID, they have rules on not touching and trying on the dresses. Releasing her three monsters into the store, where the two continue to scream and fight and the other starts watching some hideous kid YouTube video, very screechy singing, at full volume. Eventually they get her out of the store, but not before she and her little jerks have made it their mission to touch everything in the shop. It seriously makes me question what the heck is wrong with people. Don't you just love that these people exist and not only do these people exist, but it seems like it's their personal mission to have as many kids as possible. You'll see these kinds of people walking around with four very young kids all wrapped around them somehow. You're like, man, half of me says I'm sorry for you and half of me says, just why? But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. So of all these stories I've read today, which is your favorite and why? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you haven't yet, if you could like and subscribe, that would mean a lot to me. Whatever you do, whether it's liking, subscribing, turning notifications on, all of it helps grow this channel and I appreciate the heck out of it. So until next time, I'll see you all tomorrow with some more stories.